The launch of the first crewed mission for Boeing's Starliner spacecraft is scheduled for later tonight. Now, the test flight will carry two veteran NASA astronauts to the International Space Station. If all goes according to plan, they will return to Earth with a parachute landing in about two weeks' time. The Starliner last performed an uncrewed flight to the ISS in May of 2022. But after several delays, NASA and Boeing are now confident the ship is ready to carry astronauts into space. Tonight's launch from Cape Canaveral is scheduled for 10.34 p.m. Eastern. So for more on what we can expect from tonight's launch, we are now joined by Jonathan McDowell. He's an astrophysicist at the Harvard-Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics. Jonathan, good to speak to you tonight. Thanks for having me. So how exciting is this? Boeing has been working on this for quite some time. Uh, I think it was this was supposed to actually happen back in 2017, but there have been a number of hurdles to overcome. Uh, talk to me about those hurdles and, and maybe what it's taken to get here. Right. So... In 2014, NASA gave contracts to both SpaceX and Boeing to develop a way to get astronauts to the space station that didn't involve having to catch a ride from the Russians. And so but, uh, SpaceX came up with its Dragon spacecraft. Uh, Boeing came up with this Starliner. But Boeing's uh, schedule kept slipping. They had an initial test flight, which really did not go very well. Lots of problems uh, uh, cropped up. They did an unplanned, previously unplanned second test flight that went much better, docked with the space station. And so finally, years late, and after SpaceX has been flying dragons to the station regularly uh, with lots and lots of people going up on them, uh, Boeing's now ready. It's now ready to get back in the game. And, and you know, after... Uh, decades of Boeing being the premier provider of spaceships for uh, the U.S. from uh, the X-15 rocket plane to the space shuttle, uh, Apollo. Now they're back in the game and trying to reclaim their reputation. Yeah, let's talk about that reputation because Boeing's been in the headlines a lot recently for issues surrounding both both their planes and their spacecrafts. How important do you think as a company uh, it, this launch is for Boeing's, uh, let's call it a currently rocky reputation? Yeah, I mean, I think it's pretty critical that it goes well. You know, it doesn't have to go perfectly, but it has to go basically fine or else that will just add on to this story that's coming from all directions that, that Boeing's lost its mojo. Uh, and we saw that with uh, the Boeing 737. We've seen that with the Starliner program. Uh, that in the aerospace industry generally, there's concern that when Boeing uh, merged with McDonnell Douglas back in the 90s, they they really got taken over by the accountants and they lost their engineering edge. So I think they've done a lot of work to get Starliner ready to go now, and uh, hopefully it will all go smoothly. But they, there's a lot riding on this for Boeing, I think. Jonathan, you said it doesn't have to go perfectly. I mean, if I'm on that spacecraft, it has to go perfectly. <laughs> what, what exactly, right. what, what do you mean by that? Well, I mean, you know, if uh, you can have any uh, computer crashes that you have to reboot, you have to go over to a backup system. There are little tiny glitches that happen on every space flight, right? Uh, and so, so, you know, this is complicated stuff. The, the hardware, you know, you, 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 all of us have fought with software on our computers and had to, like, reboot things. That happens. Uh, but, uh, but it's got a... Get the space, get the astronauts safely to the space station, and you know the the uh, propulsion system has to work right, the life support system has to work right, the electricity has to work right, the navigation, and then it's got to take them back home again, uh, and it's got to successfully re-enter the atmosphere at the right angle. The heat shield's got to work, the parachutes have got to work, and it's going to thump down on White Sands Missile Range in New Mexico, uh, hopefully gently. And if they can do that, then they're golden. Okay, let's talk about the Elon Musk factor here, because you mentioned this SpaceX beat Boeing to the punch with its launch of the, the Crew Dragon spacecraft. That was back in 2020. They've had a lot of successful launches since then. They use, as I understand, far less money uh, from, from NASA. What kind of a space race is this really if SpaceX is so much further ahead in the game than Boeing? Or am I reading it wrong? No, I, th I think that's right. I think SpaceX has a big lead. And there's a big difference, right? Boeing is approaching this as a traditional aerospace company. They have this contract for a ferry ship to the space station that they're designing to, and that's what they're delivering. 
SpaceX has much broader ambitions that go beyond just the making the money, although they like that. Um, they want to go to Mars. They want to build spaceships that will be used for lots of different things. And so they're not quite as driven by just the specific contract. And so it remains to be seen how you know that investment that SpaceX has made in being a, uh, making a more flexible spaceship than they actually needed will let them keep their lead. To what extent Boeing, which is used to being a prime contractor for the government, is able to maybe commercialize Starliner for for other uses? Uh, you know that that those are big questions. But but I think right now, even if this flight is successful, SpaceX has established a significant lead. In uh, in human spaceflight over Boeing right now, and if the Starship actually works, then they're going to be very hard to, to catch up. Does it matter if Boeing can catch up? I guess from your perspective, how important is it that there be a, a Boeing and a, a SpaceX in this this race, or does it does it matter? Should all resources just go in potentially to one? But, you know that's very dangerous, and we've seen that happen. Where when we just had the space shuttle and when it uh, had an accident, uh, you know there was nothing to replace it. We had to go up with the Russians for a while. Uh, it's really good to have two players in the game, so that if you have an engineering problem where you have to ground the fleet, one of the fleets for a while, you have the other fleet that you can still go up and and take the astronauts up into space. So I think that that was a very prudent investment on NASA's part to give contracts to two different companies and and sort of have our redundancy that way. And, and you know, space flight, one of the reasons that that's been so successful is this idea of redundancy, always have a backup. And so these systems back each other up very well. Jonathan, will you be watching the launch tonight? Oh, yes. I'm looking forward to seeing that that uh, ULA Atlas rocket take off and uh, this unusual hammerhead shape. and. Uh, Hoping, crossing my fingers, that it's uh, going to get into orbit safely and, and, and complete its mission. Jonathan McDowell, astrophysicist at the Harvard Smithsonian Center of Astrophysics. Really appreciate the conversation. Thank you. Thank you.